Hi there, my name is Brooks from Character Design Forge. At first glance, it may seem off topic to talk about comics, but character design is a part of visual storytelling, and a lot of character designers, including myself, are telling stories through comics. Right now, I'm putting out a new page of my comic Denizen every Monday at denizencomic.com. And a long time ago before Denizen, I was putting out a comic called Also Bagels consistently for four years when I was 16. And comics are so time intensive, and any methods of saving time are invaluable. I went through a lot of trial and error in how I created comics digitally. At first, back then, I was even trying to make them in Illustrator. But I've refined my process down to one that is the most efficient use of your time when making comics in Photoshop. So the file size that I prefer is 11 inches by 17 inches for my comic Denizen. That's a standard comic book page size. But depending on your purpose for your comic, it could of course be any size. The size and layout isn't necessarily important. For a four panel humor strip, you may want to make it square, something like 11 inches by 11 or 6600 pixels square. As far as resolution, I tend to work at 600, just because I like to be safe, and I would encourage you to be too, just so that you could potentially blow your artwork up and that it will always be print ready. Usually people say that working in 300 in color is sufficient, and 600 for black and white line art. I just like to go the extra mile, but of course, at a higher DPI, your computer, depending on how powerful it is, may not be able to handle it. Now, the basis of my process here in Photoshop really utilizes the layers functionality. So a lot of people may start by creating panels this way. They'll either draw a box out and draw in the lines on the side. You'll see some artifacting here. It's just from the current version of Creative Cloud that's causing some issues. And now this panel is part of everything, right? You can't really move it around. It's on the background layer, which means that it's all surrounded by white. There's no transparency here. As soon as you move the black, the white comes with it. So what I like to do is create the following layers. Now, I'm not usually creating them all up front, but for the purposes of our demonstration, I'll do them now. So you can double click on the name of a layer. I'll call this one background. Now I'll usually create the following seven layers. This bottom one will end up being the layout layer. The next one up is the background color. Or just any background. The next will be the color layer. Then the sketch. The ink layer. And finally, bubbles. Over top of this, you would put text, which would go separately. The first thing that I'm going to do here is draw a large box out that's leaving margin for the gutters, that white space on the edge of a comic. And of course, I'm using the marquee tool, which is the M keyboard key. Now what I can do is deselect areas of my page in order to create individual panels. So I'm holding down the Alt key to deselect. You see that little minus icon. Now I'm creating panels across and now the same vertically. If I wanted to, I could press the G key or this paint bucket tool and fill in my gray space right now. I'm not too worried about the fact that gray is my color. I can also hold down Command or Control D to deselect all of this, and if I was ready to go, then this would be fine. If I want to continue to make panels, I could cut them out and just hit the Delete key with the Marquee tool. Or with other selection things like the Lasso tool, I could make diagonal panels and delete those. So let's say that we're, we're good here. Next, what I might want to do is go to the top of my layout, hit T, or clicking this button here, and I can start any words that I have. And likely, I've written this page out ahead of time. I'm using a free font called Web Letter, going up to 18 points. So this would be my text. 
And it's good, especially if you have a lot of text in a panel, to figure out how it's going to balance out with the artwork. Of course, it would make little sense to start drawing in a section where a word bubble will cover up. So now that my layout is set, I'm going to switch layers and come up here to sketch. So I'm going to hit the D key, which will set my color back to black. Of course, you can choose whatever color you'd like. Now selecting the brush tool by either clicking it or hitting the B key. Now this is the next reason that I like to separate things out into layers. Notice how some of the sketch layer is now poking out of the panel, and of course we don't want that. Well, by taking all of these layers, holding down the Alt key, and clicking the line in between each of these layers so that this symbol comes up, everything will now lay over the layout panel. So because there's, on the layout panel, transparent pixels here, you see if we were to draw on the background layer, that's the only portion of that layout layer that's transparent. So now all of the transparent properties are being carried up through the rest of these layers. Next I'll go up to the sketch layer again. I'll lower the opacity down to maybe 30 or 40 percent depending on what I'm looking to do. I'll change my brush to ink and go up to the ink layer, dropping the size down to about 20. So you notice, of course, that the ink is also not leaving this section. If we were to hold the Alt key over this line again and take it off of the dependency of that layout layer, you'll see that the art would still be poking out. So now, hopefully, our inking process is done. We can hide the sketch layer to leave only our line work. And now you're looking to color in your work. Well, what you could do is head to the color layer, pick something, and start to coloring book in your artwork. Sometimes that's necessary, sometimes it's not a big deal, but when you're dealing with an entire page of line work, just blocking in that color can be really time consuming. So what I like to do is go to the ink layer here and select a portion of the line work. Now also notice that here we have an open section where the line work isn't meeting together, it's just leaving the page. If we were to, again, turn off the dependency, we would see this open gap. But that's okay. We're going to use the wand tool up here, or the W key, and holding down Alt will deselect, so only that line work area is selected. Now if we went back to the color layer now and filled it in, we'd see a few artifacts. One being the fact that the color is exactly the same as the ink. So sometimes Photoshop will have an issue where that color is still kind of poking out, and that's mostly due to the aliasing that it's doing. So going back a few steps, we have our selected line work, and what we're going to do is go up to Select, Modify, and the Contract option will be there for you. I've already mapped it to my keyboard. So all I'm going to do is contract by two pixels, and now you see that zoomed in, once filled in the color, won't leave that section of the line. Now at this point, instead of choosing the color that I intend to eventually use, I'll usually pick something like a garish pink or green in order to flat the color out. So hitting the G key or the paint bucket tool, I'm going to fill that in. Now of course, this section isn't filled in because the loop isn't closed. If we turn off the ink though, you'll see that the green is still there. So I'm going to deselect this, and instead of going back to the brush tool in order to fill this in, I'm going to use the pencil tool. I'll show you the reason why. Using the brush tool, the edge of our line is actually softer. Now if I go to fill this in, you'll see this weird ghost line that's left over. But if I use the pencil tool, 
There's no subtlety with it. There's no smoothing on the sides. So we'll go back a few steps. And holding down shift, I'll draw a straight line. And with the paint tool, I'll fill it in. Of course here, because we used a selection that was based off of the line art, which was done with a brush tool, we still have to fill this in here. The other thing that you can do instead of manually going over it is actually just to fill it in a second time, and that'll go away. Now with the pencil tool still selected, we can go back to color, choose the color that I actually wanted for his skin, and you'll see that as soon as I start to draw things in, I'm leaving the lines. Instead, what we can do here is go back a few steps, and this option right here, the little checkerboard, will lock the transparency of the layer. So now the only thing that can be drawn on is what's already in the layer. So making that line, I can fill in the rest of the headspace, and you'll see that there's no ghost line left over there. It's the greatest thing I've ever made. Now anything that you want to happen behind your character can go on the background layer. What's nice is you're not drawing directly on the panel. This is simply a layer over it. So going back to the brush tool, we can fill in whatever we want behind him. One thing that I tend to do when rendering is to select this color layer, right click it, duplicate it, put these other layers back over the, the layout. Now what I'll do is go to Image, Adjustments, and Hue Saturation. Now I can drop the lightness, increase the saturation, and erase away on this layer. Of course we're going to unlock the transparency there. Now we can erase away the areas of shadow in order to add some shading. At some point we lost our bubble layer because we wrote over it with the text tool. So we'll go back at a bubbles layer. Now what I like to use is the marquee tool here, the elliptical marquee tool drag it out underneath our text, fill it in with the color white, deselect it, and then use the brush tool to point the speech bubble at the character speaking. Now, small methods like that may seem simple or like a matter of taste in such a simple demonstration, but over the course of something like a real page like this one, small uses of this method in practice tend to save you a ton of time. That's it from me today. I'm making new videos every day this month at characterdesignforge.com. Subscribing on YouTube will let you know when they're available. As always, I'd love to hear your questions and comments. I'd love to know if you're able to use this method and if it improves the time and quality of your comics. Thank you for watching and have fun creating.